Hello everyone, my name is Exalted One, and welcome back to Heroes University. Today we are pulling Murad and Bronzebeard out of the vault in a good video, uh, similar to what we did with Jaina and Damage as an overall uh, category, but we're going to do that with tanks today at the request of many of you looking for those tank players that are trying to start out. Muradin is an extremely strong tank, one of the few that would perfectly fit the categories that we're looking at of being a solo tank. Now there are others that can fill that role, but Muradin is one of the strongest and the best to get used to. So let's go ahead and hop in, try and figure out what the categories or pieces of being a good tank are, and break that apart for you today. Now, to start off, really, what makes a good tank, or what do I mean by being a good solo tank? Well, it's broken down by Cavalier, one of the pros that's out in the scene, uh, that there's four different categories that really exemplify a good tank, or the traits that they need to have to make them succeed in that particular area and those are going to be with one engagement having a strong engagement of crowd control being able to go in very hard on the enemy team and to kind of break them up and to create the good opportunities for your team to deal damage and to get kills second peeling being able to help your team survive again with that same crowd control that you have slows anything that's going to help you back off and to get back towards your your squishies on your team to keep them alive Number third, being a good mobile ward. What that means, because it's kind of a generic term, is being able to face check bushes, being able to have vision, being able to find the enemy team and not be in absolute trouble when that happens. Murden in particular with Dwarf Toss is able to get away very easily and is able to survive a lot of damage. And being able to soak in that damage is going to help him succeed in that tank role. And number four is going to be anchoring. Anchoring is, can also be classified as like zoning or being able to hold down an area, keep your team in an advantageous location on the map while denying that for enemy teams. So being able to use your crowd control to zone them back and to be able to stand there and know that if they try and push too hard, that you're going to be able to turn on them, lock that one particular hero down and have your team blow them up. So being able to move back and forth to bob and weave against the enemy team to soak up the damage that you can while having good sustain, having good reliable crowd control is going to absolutely make the difference between different tanks. Sonya, for example, is more closer to a bruiser role. She does have crowd control with her spear that it's a momentary stun. She does fairly good damage, but there's not a whole lot of repositioning for her that's going to be able to help you peel. She does probably more damage in general than Muradin, in most situations but she doesn't have that that mobile war she's doesn't have a very good reliable escape that's going to be separate from her crowd control in addition to that her spear with talents even is the only way she can escape so it doesn't really fit that main tank role muradin does his Crowd control is on a whole different ability from his engage or escape with his dwarf toss, and you're able to slow enemies down with your uh, W, with your smash. And so being able to use all of those abilities and your whole tankiness as a whole with Muradin is much better in filling that role as a main tank. So let's go ahead and break these down piece by piece and try and find out what makes a good engagement. How am I supposed to peel? What does it mean really being a mobile ward or where, what does that look like? And anchoring needs to be something that we go over in an actual visual format. So we're going to break apart in some pieces of a different game that I played to kind of show off those different aspects and to show how those are used. So let's go ahead and start with engagement. Engagement's very similar, breaks down into four different parts, I feel. So there's going to be multiple things you're going to be looking at and things that you need to accomplish as a tank on a good engagement. Now, first off, the one thing that you want to look for is even talents. If you're fighting down a talent tier, that's an extreme disadvantage. And usually you very rarely, unless you're forced to do so, want to fight the enemy team when you are down a talent tier. It's very rarely a good idea and doesn't often turn out too well for the side that's down in that advantage. And second, immediately, if you find someone that's out of position, that's in a bad position, you can pounce on them immediately, blow them up with your friendly team, and have that advantage going into a fight. If you can gain isolation on a target, which relates very well to out-of-position enemies, if you're able to jump in, pull one person away from the enemy team, and have them back into your damage that's going to be able to absolutely delete them from the game, you're going to have that advantage again as you go deeper into that fight or start to chase the enemy team for those kills to have a definitive victory for that fight. And four, you're going to be looking for disruption on the enemy damage dealers. 
if your team is able to do damage uninterrupted to be able to blow up targets and to focus down individuals and the enemy team isn't, you're going to win that fight. So if you're able to get back, get in the way of casters, stop them from dealing damage to your team, you're going to be able to engage further to continue on, have your healer heal you up so that you can continue to do what you do best, which is get in their face, stop them from dealing damage, and to blow up every single member on the enemy team if you're able to. Now, for a good engagement, this is going to be a solid example. Well, right out the gate, we're looking for the few things that we always want to check. We're on even talent tiers, so we're good to engage. Do we have numbers relatively? Well, at this point in the game, we have Vision on Malfurion and on Genji, and we know that Samuro was bottom with Zarya. We have the minions there for that. So moving in here as Malfurion rotates, we know that we're going to have a 3v2 instantly. The issue is that Johan is really fucking hard to kill. So we're trying to make sure that we can isolate Jaina whenever she's going to be open. So myself, I'm trying to position very aggressively because we have very good engage as well from uh, from Greymane to be able to jump in and deal damage. We're able to position ourselves very aggressively. So we're trying to clear the enemy waves and move this in. As Malfurion hits the roots, this is our snap. This is our the thing that we're looking for at any time. If someone's out of position or if they get caught... We dive in. We go nuts. So immediately when that happens, Johan is going to move us around a little bit, but instantly started moving in this direction to try and body block her to keep her stuck in that position. So we rotate around again. She gets away from us a little bit because of Johanna's movement. We throw out a stun and immediately reposition around Jaina to stop her from getting away. So Greyman is able to jump in, deal his damage, and we jump on top of her for that final kill very simple we had the advantage going in in numbers we have an even talent tier we were able to isolate a target and be able to blow them up immediately this is a situation again where we're looking for a good engagement we have a talent tier advantage on the enemy team but we're going to be down in numbers because Greymane was still top securing that we recognize or have that feeling that someone's going to rotate in the objective is up it's very important for them to try and gain that to come back in this game because they are down momentarily so the idea that we have here in the setup that at least just looking on this 3v3, where is our engagement going to be? We're always going to be looking for those damage dealers or the healer in usual circumstances. And because Jaina is their high, high damage on this team, we're going to be looking to try and isolate her as much as possible and deal that damage to Jaina as much as possible. So we're floating around waiting for an opportunity, looking to possibly get roots or to follow up on something. So the enemy team does engage quite hard on us, but we're still looking to turn it around at any time. Recognize that Samuro is coming up as a flank. We still have a talent tier advantage. So whenever possible, I'm looking to try and get in on Jaina while still protecting the friendly team. So we dance back and forth, try and find the opportunity, try and weave that in. And again, so we start moving in here because Genji is going to be getting low on the back end because of Samuro. We're going to be looking to dive again on Jaina and just disrupt her from dealing damage to our backline. Even if we're not securing a kill, we're still doing something that's productive to stop them and engage well for our team. We try and move in, continue to move in, always be moving forward when your team has an advantage. Trying to, again, disrupt the damage dealers on the enemy team, reposition at any time, and keep an eye out on any of the enemy team that might be getting low to pounce on them. Zarya was out of position, we stun her, secure that kill, and again, look for the next one. Where are we looking to go? Jaina is low on the back end, is dealing damage to our friendly team, so we're trying to get there. We try and move forward as aggressively as possible with Dwarf Toss, and try what we can to move forward on the enemy team. We unfortunately, do lose Malfurion, sometimes it's unavoidable, but what's the follow-up to that immediately we know that genji is a threat because we're all low if we can stun him out that's going to be a big boon for us and we do so right as he explodes so looking for those engagements for the opportunity to stun to disrupt and to move forward on the enemy team and to focus the right hero and to give our team a good advantage is always the goal of a good engagement now, again, we're looking for those good rotations and for isolating an enemy hero. Always keeping an eye on the minimap at any given time. Up top, we're not really going to be able to have an impact there in any reasonable time. Bottom lane is pushed in pretty hard and the enemy team is not rotating out. 
but we can look on the mini map and immediately see that there's going to be a skirmish going middle between our gray main and their Zarya. So we're looking and immediately starting to mount to roll up there and to have her isolated. Because again, looking at levels, do we have an advantage? Well, we're up by one right on the verge of getting our ultimates, which is incredibly impactful. That's the best time to try and fight the enemy team. So right out the gate, advantage, 100% we have that. Is someone out of position? Well, we immediately mounted up, we're ready to roll, and Zarya is very far away from any towers or anything that might help her out, and these are all out of ammo. We saw that on the minimap. We start moving up for that engagement. We know that our friendly team down here is too far away to be able to help her, so rolling in on this immediately is going to give us that advantage. We have that opportunity for a pick. We're going to have her isolated from the rest of her team, so we're able to blow her up, deal that damage that we need to, and there's no other damage dealers around that we need to disrupt from killing our teammates. So we start moving up as quickly as we can. Here we're going to come into frame. Gray main very low, so we need to get in as soon as we can to try and deal that damage. She realizes that she's going to be rotated on, but we get in front of her with dwarf toss to make sure that she can't escape or walk away towards her towers. So we know that she can't get away. And our only option is really to try and go up. With the stun out and the Malfurion roots behind her, she's just stuck and immediately dies. We had the talent tier advantage. We had the numbers advantage. We had her out of position and were able to isolate her. Those are the engagements and the picks that you're going to want to look for at any time. If you notice you can rotate on an enemy hero and that you're going to get that kill, you want to do so. And recognizing those opportunities is very important. So always look at your minimap as a tank in particular to know where you can make those opportunities happen. Now, for engagements, here's going to be a good way to see where not to engage or when not to. We have a level advantage, yes. We do not yet have a talent advantage. And the enemy team is clumped up just as much as we are. But we have two members of the team rotating down, the healer is not with us, and our damage is also backing up. We have an opportunity to go in on Genji, but it's not going to be wise, because there's no one else here really to follow up with that. We have an idea that the enemy team is going to be here. There's four members I'm right here. We can start this, but there's a strong likelihood that we're not going to win that fight, be split, and be picked apart. So instead of going in, we just back up. We just walk away from the fight because there's not a need to. There's not an objective that's going to be at risk that we could lose at the moment. There's not a reason really to fight because we have the level advantage. And if we die, that's going to be a much greater experience gain for the enemy team than it would be for us to get those kills. So again, we just reposition, no need to fight and to be able to back off. We've looked at a few different examples of when to engage and the last one, when not to. So a couple things just in general on engagements you want to keep in mind. Always watch the map. Know where your opportunities are so you can look for those at any time to rotate and to secure a kill. Know your level. Always be paying attention to what level you are in relation to the enemy team. And if you have a talent tier advantage, you can be a little bit more bold. You can go in a little bit harder and you can make things happen always be looking for those opportunities to rotate to kill and to focus down a target that you're going to be able to blow up and finally don't force a fight if you don't need to there's nothing worse that's going to hinder your advancement in the game than fighting when you don't need to if there's not an objective up if there's nothing on the map that you're going to be contesting there's no reason to fight if you're on an even talent tier soak experience to gain the advantage before the next objective or just make sure that you're staying alive, staying safe. If you are down in talent tier, you need to soak. Soaking is going to be much, much more important than fighting unless you're given the golden opportunity to find a pick and someone that's isolated themselves with poor positioning. Now, let's go ahead and hop in to the next part of, uh, of being a tank, peeling for your friendly team. In general, the concept of peeling for your friendly team is fairly straightforward. You try and get in the way to take damage so that they don't die. That's about it. Making sure that you can get the enemy team off of your guys and make sure that they're able to continue doing damage and not be disrupted. It really breaks down into two different parts that you need to be mindful of. And the first one is going to be controlling the enemy team with your stuns, slows, or roots. Depending on what particular hero that you have at your arsenal or who you're playing, 
you're going to have one of these three things available, if not more than that. So being able to utilize those to get in the way of the enemy team, the enemy tank, usually from diving in on your team is going to help you tremendously. If your team survives, you're going to win the fight. So if you make sure that they're not dying or if they're not being disrupted from doing the damage and surviving, then you're going to end up winning those kind of fights. And two, body blocking. Just moving your big bulky tank body in the way of the enemy team, soaking up the damage that you can and making sure that it doesn't hit your squishies in the back line, you're going to be advancing forward and to be able to deal more damage in the fight than your enemy team. So as you as a tank, you always need to be mindful of your health a little bit, but soaking up that damage rather than the damage dealers on your team or your, your healer, you're going to be able to sustain better than the enemy team and be able to push them off of a point, be able to engage deeper, or be able to just wail on the enemy team and absolutely crush them in those fights. So let's take a look at what these are going to look like between those stuns and between the body blocking of how that's going to actually look and where you need to see that in the game. Here we're going to see an, a rotation by the enemy team that really puts myself and Greymane at great risk in this particular shot. Jaina has very high burst damage and is able to blow up targets very easily. In particular, like Greymane doesn't exactly have the highest health of any hero. He's not the weakest. But I'm in lane trying to bait through this Jaina to get further out in the lane to try and secure that kill. But the enemy team rotates on us here with Malfurion and with Johanna. So them moving forward is going to put us at pretty strong risk here. We get pulled in by Johanna's Condemn into a root from Malfurion. We're starting to get low, and here's where the actual process of peeling for your enemy or for your friendly team is going to come in very, very strongly. So, uh, Greyman isn't going to try and engage a little bit further, try and escape. My idea is I'm trying to move in between Greymane and the enemy team. Jaina doesn't yet have the pierce for her Q, so we're able to try and soak up any damage that might be shooting out towards Greymane if we get in the way. So we're trying to slow down those heroes and just block them from getting to Greymane any further. We're dealing any more damage to him. So again, just kind of weaving back and forth, making sure that we're going to block any skill shots that are going to head towards Greymane. And just moving in again to make sure that he's going to stay safe. And in this particular chance, we do. We are able to regen health as Muradin, and he didn't really lose all that much because we got right in the way. Now, we're only going to really have one example for peeling, just because it's a fairly simple concept in regards of what it actually looks like. You put your body in the way, you stun the enemy team if they're moving towards your friendlies, and just making sure that you can try and soak up as much damage as possible. If you take the damage, it's so much better than your squishies or your damage dealers taking that. So, again, just a few things to keep your eye on when you're going to be playing as a tank and trying to defend your team from damage. Keep an eye on your squishies at all time. Know where they're going to be at. Look for their positioning. If they make an error, you need to compensate for their error. You need to rotate or move yourself so that you can take the damage rather than them. Yes, they may have made an error to get into that position, but you can make a play to get them out of it. And you can make sure that everyone on your team survives an engagement that otherwise they wouldn't have. Definitely always use your body. If you can stop someone from getting further on your backline just by how you move your hero, and that's really just keeping yourself between you, your friendly, and the enemy team. So just staying in that zone in between and making sure that your position is correct in that no man's land, if you will, that's going to help out tremendously for your tank game, using your body as a tool for your kit rather than just being somewhere and trying to stun them out of it. And lastly, protecting the team is so much more important than securing kills. Kills are always going to help, they're always going to be valuable, but if your entire team is dead and you got one kill because you dove so far into the enemy team and didn't protect your own, congratulations. Your team's going to be a little pissed at you for diving that far, you're going to end up dying, and everyone on your side is going to die. So you got one kill for five. Not really good to justify that. It's not really comparable in that way. So if you secure and you keep your team safe, they're going to get those kills. You're going to see those fights turn in your advantage, and you don't have to dive in. And as a tank, it's not your job to dive that far into it to secure those kills when your team is dying. You need to secure the team first, secure kills secondary. Now, finally, the last one that we're going to hit to, and we're going to cover both of them together. 
because they're fairly related. They are separate and they are different. But both mo being a mobile ward and anchoring an area are very, very close. And it's essentially that it's not the active part of actually like fighting or engaging or, or disengaging or peeling for your team. It's where you want to position to make those things easier or to make those things better. So essentially when you're scouting for your enemy team, when you're going into those bushes and things that you can survive that your squishier heroes can't, that's going to be acting as a mobile ward, gaining that vision, moving in towards areas that are going to be contested or that you're going to have an advantage when the enemy team needs to get there. You're able to zone out once you have control of an area, the enemy team. You control that spot. Their damage dealers can't get past you without taking significant damage. And their tanks are going to have a hard time getting past you if you're using your cooldowns for your crowd control well. If you're zoning them out, if you're keeping them back, they're not going to be able to breach in towards your team to actually deal that damage to your backline. And your team is going to have the opportunity to blow them up or to have that positional advantage on the enemy team. So let's take a look at a final clip to try and see what that's going to look like. Here we have a really good spot of on Towers of Doom in particular, that you can hold down an area, you can anchor it to hold the enemy team from getting where they want to, which are the shrines, and keep them in a particular spot. You're zoning that area, you're holding control of a spot so the enemy team can't move forward. So here, this is going to be a bush in particular around most of these shrines because they have good areas to hold off the enemy team. So right here, the enemy team is trying to engage immediately pounce on them, hold the area, and stop them from being able to move in at all. In this particular spot, we're going to be serving as that mobile ward for our team. Now, for the most part, you don't have vision directly of this line right here, this area in between, kind of this no man's land for Towers of Doom. We have Malfurion and Samuro down here that are, can be vulnerable if the enemy team rotates. So our position and our goal is to just hold this area, give vision, and to have them know what's going on. So if we know where the enemy team is coming from, we can still peel for the friendly team. We can get them secured and make sure that they don't die or get picked. So we're just holding this area up top as the enemy team is trying to rotate in. So we already saw that the Genji came in. was We were waiting for him. We knew that the enemy team was going to rotate. Genji moving in. He already used a big majority of his mobility. He's going to get ulted here, stunned by us, and then we can follow up and immediately drop him. So that's part of the power. You see their abilities go off. You know where they're going to engage from, and you can block them from escaping. So having that area, knowing where to be as that mobile ward, where to keep vision, where to stand, where to be at any given time is very important. And it's essentially just knowing, well, where's the enemy team going to come from? There's only usually a few options for that. And especially with Towers of Doom in this particular area, you know that we were just with them middle uh, earlier in this game, and they were starting to come down on us. And so knowing to be there, to just stay in a spot that's defensible for your team, is going to be extremely important. And to just have that forethought of where's the enemy team coming from, where do I need to be to protect my team? And that's going to be a huge part of that mobile ward, of having that vision for an area, being able to escape, being able to peel for your team and get away, and as well acting as uh, that anchor for that particular spot. We can hold this down. We can hold this area. We have reinforcement for it. The enemy team can't really get through this area without using some of their major cooldowns or abilities to get past me. And that's going to be that aspect that's a little bit more of a microplay. There's something that's that's important to keep in your mind to when you're looking to advance as a tank in particular. So let's go ahead and just do a quick wrap up of what we went over today. And just the last few points that we have, just going back over everything again, wrapping it up with a nice little bow. Think before you engage. Always remember to look at your talents, think about your advantages, think about your positioning on the map where your team is, and what you're going to be focusing or who you're going to be focusing when you go into an actual fight. It's going to help you plan it out, strategize with your team about what you need to focus and what you need to accomplish as the tank in particular. Protect your team above all else. If your damage dealers are dead, you're not going to be killing the enemy team. If you dive too deep and your team is left alone, their tank and one damage dealer is all it takes to be able to just plow through your entire team and it makes it extremely difficult to win any fight if you're going too hard and not focusing on protecting the team. Scout for your team. 
you are the big health. You are the big body that's on the battlefield. You can go into a bush and escape, especially on Muradin in particular. You can get out with Dwarf Toss. You can have those those great tools to be able to survive so many things and stuns to get away that you can do that. Don't let your team try and scout things that they shouldn't. If they run into the enemy team, they're dead. If you run into the enemy team, you can get away. You can stop them. You can block them. You can hold them off until your team gets there and backs you up. You can do all those things, and the rest of your team can't. Be that tank. Be that big face that checks the bush, gets punched, and then just deals with it. Definitely always keep the enemy from doing what they want. That's part of that anchoring, of holding an area, keeping them from going where they want to be, keeping them away from that advantage on the map, about that positioning that gives you that, that leg up in every fight. You want to have that spot. You need to be there first, and you need to think ahead to make sure that you're rotating to those positions, that you're getting to the objective before the enemy team, that you have those better rotations, that you are the ones that are not getting isolated and aren't getting picked off. And you as the tank have a great a great battlefield vision or should be more mindful of the map than almost anyone else on the team because you're going to be looking for those pick potentials. You're going to be looking at the map. You're going to be managing those rotations. You are the leader that's on the battlefield. And because people are going to follow up with your stuns, with your crowd control to deal the damage and to kill the enemy heroes. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by and checking out the video. The support for the Heroes University series has been outstandingly positive, and I absolutely appreciate you. I hope this helps in some way of understanding a little bit of the aspects of tanking. By no means is this a far advanced guide, but it should give you some insight into what you should be doing, what you need to be thinking of when you go in and when you queue up on a tank. Now, this wasn't exactly 100% murder specific, but... We are going to be going in with a quick match video shortly thereafter with Muradin in particular and the thoughts going in and how to manage his abilities, how to manage his cooldowns, and what you're looking for. But the mindset is everything that we covered in this video, and he does it almost better than any other hero in the game right now to dive in, to do those things that the tank needs to do. And he is, without a doubt, one of, if not the only, hardcore solo tank that fills all of these categories and all of these things that you need to have as a good tank. But thank you again, everybody. My name is Exalted One, and we will see you all next time in the Nexus.